Namaste. On behalf of Indica Courses, I welcome you all to this webinar. Indica is an institution that most of you are familiar with. It aims to enable seekers through the self-selfless self-framework envisioned by our founder, Sri Hari Kiran Vardhaman. Indica Courses is a pioneering edtech platform from Indica in the field of indigenous knowledge systems. We create and curate online courses across multiple uh, IKS disciplines for lifelong learners who share our belief in the transformative power of timeless indigenous wisdom. We've curated uh, more than 80 courses since our inception have had more than 2000 enrollments. Each course is curated with much thought, emotion, passion and effort. I'd like to share in brief how the Indica course Introduction to Sanatan Dharma came to be curated. We are in an era where karma is reduced to a five letter equivalent of a female dog. Many Hindus can be seen using that phrase without a second thought. Many of us of late not only seem to be using but believing in YOLO. You only live once. Whether it is a manifestation of ignorance of our core principles or uh, a compulsion to blend into the modern world, we really can't say. Uh, we also encounter many well-meaning individuals, both Hindus and non-Hindus, commenting on the need for a reform in Hinduism. More often than not, the zeal to reform indicates a lack of awareness of the basic form per se. With education having become just a means for gainful employment and material success, Hindus don't have any formal initiation into the tenets of their faith. Earlier, we had grandparents offering an immersion through stories from Itihasas, Puranas, and other texts from our Shastras. However, that tradition seems to be breaking, thanks to a rise also in nuclear families. There are many, many questions that kids and adults both seem to grapple with. Why is it that what has traditionally been called Sanatana Dharma or Eternal Dharma, why is it called Hinduism? How far can we trace its origin? What does it comprise of? What does it encompass? What is it and what is it not? To answer questions like these and more, we decided to introduce a course that would offer a sort of an introduction to learners so we reached out to our faculty, Sri Subramanyam C, who very kindly agreed to work on the same. This is a beginner level course. The purpose of today's session, this open house, is to provide you all with an overview to this course that begins from the 1st of November, 2022. Before I invite uh, Sri Subramanyam C to take us through uh, what is lined up in the course, I want to introduce him to you so that you understand why is it that we reached out to him in the first place. An electrical engineer by qualification and a postgraduate in management from IIM Lucknow, Sri Subramanyam C, fondly known as Subu, Subuji as we call him, hails from a family of Samavedic scholars. With experience of more than 13 years in management consulting, he's currently working as the director of strategy for a leading MNC in India. He has several papers and articles to his credit published in various national and international journals and presentations at various conferences and seminars. He has been a visiting faculty of Vedanta, Itihasa, Puranas and Bhakti at the University of Mumbai, where he has done his MA in Sanskrit with a specialization in Vedanta and diploma in manuscriptology. He has formally studied Veda chanting for eight years and is currently pursuing his doctoral studies on Indic perspectives for modern leadership from Chinmaya Vishwavidya Peet. Subhuji is also trained in Carnatic music, having become, uh, begun his formal training at age 13. His YouTube channel, Subhu's Corner, comprises sessions to increase awareness of our great Indic tradition and knowledge. So without further ado, I invite Subhuji to take us through an overview of this course. Subhuji, the stage is all yours. Namaste and uh, thanks a lot, Dimpleji, for that wonderful introduction. 
Namaste to all. I'll just share my screen. Uh, let me know if this is visible. Uh, is everybody able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So once again, uh, Namaskaram, Namaste to all. <clears throat> so the course of introduction to Sanatana Dharma. Now, uh, as Dimpleji said, we felt this session would be important because the moment you read something like this of introduction to Sanatana Dharma or introduction to Hinduism, there is a lot, there are a lot of questions in the minds of many people as to what will this course be all about. There are a lot of concerns, there are a lot of skepticism that typically people might have. And this is all a result of what's happening around how people have been interpreting, misinterpreting, understanding, misunderstanding, right? Uh, this Sanatana Dharma or Hinduism of ours. So that's where we felt this webinar would be uh, critical for us to at least put forth uh, in front of all of you how we are thinking about this entire course and provide an open interactive forum for all of you to also ask your questions and your concerns so that you can make an informed choice uh, on registering or on enrolling for this course. So I don't have too many slides. I'll probably wrap up in the next 10 to 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, I would like to have more time uh, to know your questions, your concerns, doubts, and clarifying those so that it will help you uh, think through and uh, make a, a proper choice. So the first part, the first point that I wanted to address is what is this course all about? I think Dimpleji already started speaking about it. But I had a few pointers that I've put on the slide that I'll be putting up on the slide and I want to elaborate on a few of them. So firstly, it is the course is all about introduction to Sanatana Dharma. It's purposely called as Sanatana Dharma because there is a difference between or there is a history between why it was called as Hinduism and what was it referred to as in the previous times and why it was not referred to as a specific thing. And why was Hinduism brought in later? So there is a lot of background and context. So this is going to be the course. And in our initial sessions of this course, we are going to be dealing a bit around this aspect is how we will start the entire course around. So this course is about going to be an introduction to Sanatana Dharma or introduction to Hinduism. So what is this course about? It's a structured approach to understand what all does Sanatana Dharma comprise and what is not mentioned there, what it does not. I'm sure many of you have been hearing a lot of things as part of your uh, as part of your tradition or people from your families or friends or generally in the public, you keep hearing of so many things. So the whole thing is there are a lot of things, maybe they're cluttering your mind. So how do you understand this in a structured way, in a proper methodology, the proper methodical way to say that what is leading to what why was something there and why was something not there? How did one evolve from the other? So a very structured way of understanding the various aspects of Sanatana Dharma. So this will have, from a content perspective, it will speak about various aspects, be it the Vedas, be it the different branches of knowledge. I've just kept mentioned it as branches of knowledge. It could be sciences, it could be arts, many other aspects, right? So all branches of knowledge, the various Smritis, Itihas, the epics, the Puranas, the temples, the temple related aspects, rituals, philosophy, social structures, so many, so many aspects. And this is not uh, even enough to comprise of what all it can come, what can it can actually comprise of. So it is about giving a bird's eye view into Sanatana Dharma. That's why I've highlighted the aspect. It's a bird's eye view into Sanatana Dharma. It is not a deep dive session. It is not a detailed session going into the depth of these aspects, right? That is why it is an introductory session. So it is only to make you aware of the various aspects and the things that Sanatana Dharma comprises of and generate enough inquisitiveness, interest, curiosity in you to know more about certain aspects for which then you will go into specialized courses, specialized sources, which can give you those 
knowledge, which can give you that particular information or knowledge. So it is not a deep dive course or a detailed session for any of these aspects. It is going to give a bird's eye view. And that is going to happen in a structured way so that you can make sense of where does this fit in, in the entire scheme of things. That's the whole purpose of doing this course. Now, for whom is it? So we did mention that this is going to be an introductory course. And this is probably one of the most common questions many of you might be having in your head. Like, is this the course for me? Will I be able to understand things in this course? Or will this be a course where there will be a lot of technical stuff? Maybe I need to know Sanskrit. Maybe I need to know something about the Vedas. Only then I will understand this course. There might be a lot of, lot of questions in our head. So that's why I thought it's important to just put forth to say that for whom is this course? And what do you really, what is the prerequisite that we or I am thinking as a part of starting this course? Firstly, this is for the beginners, right? It is a beginner's course. Beginners who want to study, who want to know, about Sanatana Dharma or Hinduism. And when I say beginners, there is no need of any background that we are expecting you. It is just your interest, your curiosity that you want to know about Sanatana Dharma, you want to know about Hinduism. That is the first prerequisite. Your interest, your inquisitiveness, right? That is the first part. For those people who might know some bits and pieces and most of us might be in that category where we know something or the other about it, but we don't know enough about it. So, you know, bits and pieces about it, but you would like to know many more things of what is the thing that is succeeding and proceeding. So you want to know more about that aspect. The third could be that some people might know a bit more about certain topics, but they don't know where does this fit in. Like I know something about A and B and C. But where does ABC fit into the entire scheme of things in Sanatana Dharma? This is where my point of structured approach comes into the picture. So even for people who have no background and just have the inquisitiveness to know it, yes, this is the course for you. Who know some parts of things, but they don't know many things, yes, here you will get a bird's eye view of most of the things that Sanatana Dharma comprises of. And third, you know in detail about certain things, but you don't know how the thing fits in to the whole picture. Yes, this is the course for you as well. Right? <clears throat> no restrictions on age like it's, it's not only for children or only for adults or only for certain people no as i said it is for beginners you could be beginning late you could be beginning early you could be beginning at any point of time beginners into the study of sanatana dharma that is the primary prerequisite or the criteria no aspect of caste no aspect of, you know, what kind of background you come from, gender, none of this bias. It is purely inquisitiveness. It is purely your desire, your wish to know more about. That is the primary prerequisite. All have the right to know about Sanatana Dharma. And all this we will speak in detail when the course begins. But right now I'll just say that all of us have the right to know about Sanatana Dharma. No prior knowledge of any aspect of Sanatana Dharma is needed. It is not that only if you know certain aspects can you be able to understand what is happening in the course. So the course is going to be entirely designed in a way that it's going to start from scratch. You have, so the assumption is that you have no background of Sanatana Dharma and that is where the course is going to build upon. The other main question is about the knowledge of Sanskrit. No, that is not a prerequisite. There is not necessary that you must know Sanskrit, you must know certain words, you must know how the Sanskrit word means, how the etymology is known. Wherever it is needed, I'll explain it in more detail to make it extremely palatable and extremely understandable for you. Because there might be certain cases where we might need to use some of those things, but we will then make it, we'll ensure that you understand it well. So there is no prerequisite of Sanskrit that is needed for understanding this course. So the only expectation is come with an open mind. That is a pre-prerequisite, a very important prerequisite. Don't have preconceived notions or ideas about what it is and try to see if this force fits, if this fits into this, or this is what I think and so I must prove my point. No, just come with an open mind because this, as I said, is a beginner's course. It is about the desire to know or desire to seek knowledge. So the starting point is going to be that I don't know. So the starting point has to be that I have an open mind. I'm ready to grasp or absorb what is being said 
And yes, as a process, I might have doubts, I might have questions. Yes, all this will get clarified or all this will be discussed during the course itself. So the expectation is do come with an open mind, no preconceived notions or ideas about what it is and having a viewpoint or a standpoint that you're trying to defend or that you're trying to propagate. So the last aspect about what is the approach that's going to be for this course, which is going to be based on the fact that what is the course all about and for whom is this course meant for? So this the course is going to be in English so that uh, I think this is something that would have been available already on the course details. So the language that's going to be used is English. So that is going to be understandable for all of you. There's going to be least usage of technical terms, as I mentioned, but wherever it needs to be used because you need to understand that technical term because the technical term is being used in multiple other, other forums. So you need to understand what is the correct understanding or correct meaning or the current interpretation of the technical term. There it will be used and it will be used with required explanations so that you are clearly understanding what that term means and what is the expanse or connotation or reference of that term in which or the context in which the term comes. So this entire course is being built to take through the person who has completely or who has no prior knowledge at all of Sanatana Dharma or Sanskrit or any of these bases, right? As I mentioned, I'm just repeating myself. So it is completely built for a person who has got no base in any of this and it's building from scratch. And what we're also trying to do in this course. So this is one aspect is about knowing what is Sanatana Dharma or what are the different aspects of Sanatana Dharma. The second question that many of us have in our head is that, how do I, is it relevant to me today? Does it have any relevance in the modern day? So how do we correlate with what is, what is being said as a part of the course in Sanatana Dharma and what is being observed or what is being seen today or practiced today? How do we draw this correlation? Or where do we start seeing uh, a logic to this kind of thing. This is also something that we will touch upon as we go through the various aspects of Sanatana Dharma of this course. How can we correlate many of these things with what is being observed or practiced uh, on a day to day basis today, in today's time? And wherever possible, the relevance from a contemporary perspective will be explained, especially when we speak about rituals, when we speak about social structures when we speak about temples, when we speak about philosophy, many of these things, we will try our level best to give you the relevance from a contemporary perspective. We will not stretch it beyond limits to give our own interpretations of things because all this have been interpreted by great masters with all their great knowledge. So we just need to follow them. But our endeavor would be to best reproduce or best translate or give what they have said to you or bring it in front of you because many of these things have already been said by great masters. So it just needs to be brought in front of you to say that yes, this is the relevance or this is the context in which they think they thought about that particular aspect of Sanatana Dharma. It may not be possible for all topics, but wherever topic, in whichever topic we find this is possible or we can build this relevance from a contemporary perspective, we will definitely try to bring that up so that you will be able to correlate, you will be able to relate to it and say that, yes, now I understand why this is being done, why this particular ritual is being done, what was the context in which it was conceptualized, what was the spirit behind or the spirit in which it was conceptualized and how it has changed over a period of time. So all these things will help you better understand and maybe in some cases even appreciate things much better than what we do today. This session is going to be an interactive session. So the way this session is going to be is that there's going to be a 45 minute, like it's a 60 minute uh, session, uh, 15 sessions of 60 minutes each. Around 45 minutes is going to be what the content of the course is going to be, which I'll speak on. The last 10 to 15 minutes will be open for question answers of things you did not understand, of things you felt differently, you have heard differently, right? So in the course itself, live, there will be interaction. You can ask your questions wherever possible. Wherever I have direct answers, I'll get back to you. I'll immediately clarify that. Wherever I need to get back with some 
more study from my side or some sources, I'll definitely go back and get back to you with those specific uh, answers or solutions to what you're looking for or the, uh, the questions that you have raised. And in case, even if you missed certain live sessions, we always have the discussion forums, et cetera, available as a part of the, uh, the course itself, the platform itself of Indica courses, where you can post your questions and you can start a discussion thread. And that question can then get answered by me and then other people also can uh, present their views, their opinions and what they have been hearing. So it will become a very rich uh, discussion forum, online discussion forum also that we can start building on. So this definitely will have to be an interactive course because there is no point in just having a monologue. Monologues are there everywhere. So your books, you have been reading from books, you have been listening from people. So all are monologues. The, the reason why we have this course and why it is an introduction, especially for an introductory course, the more important thing is you have more questions. You have more curiosity. So those questions need to find a way out. Few of this might be getting answered during the content itself, but many of them might need for this interactive session for me to bring it out more clearly to you or for you to get a better understanding of your uh, of the doubt or the confusion that you have related to that particular aspect. So it is going to be definitely interactive. And uh, I would put a disclaimer that I do not profess to know everything. As I mentioned, I will, can, I can always get back to you. If I don't know certain things, I'll always get back to you by speaking to the respective experts or scholars in those areas. And uh, whatever I can, I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer it during the interactive session itself. So this is pretty much what I had uh, to share with all of you as a starting point. And uh, true to the points I mentioned to you, I would like even this session to be interactive where you're making an informed choice. So very, very important for you to put forth your doubts, questions, and try to get them clarified in the session as well. Thank you, Subuji. Thank you so very much. Before we move on to the Q&A part, just a couple of inputs that perhaps I should have offered in the very beginning. Every Indica course is conducted on our learning portal. And as Subuji said, there is a discussion forum also. Every live session gets recorded and we make sure that the recording is made available on the learning portal within 72 hours. Uh, some courses have assignments, etc. All that gets conducted on the learning portal per se. And uh, we have a course in charge for every course. And there is a specific email ID to which everybody can also send their queries if they have any. Uh, this course particularly is a 15 hours course. We begin from the 22nd of November. Uh, the intent was today, like most of you can actually go and look up on Indica courses about the whole course outline, what all it would include. But we wanted to create an interactive platform for you to ask more questions to Subuji so that you can make an informed choice as he rightly said. So uh, without further ado, do we have any queries? Uh, we are happy to either... You know, if you want to raise your hand and ask a question, or if you want to post your question in the Q and A uh, box, that would also work. Uh, so, any queries, anything from the audience members? While uh, the audience formulates its queries, I also would want to uh, highlight that we offer uh, scholarships and grants, uh, and uh, the information is available on Indica courses. We also offer complimentary offers for learners who have enrolled into three or more courses. So all of that information you can check from our website, indica.courses. So Tyagarajan Shankaranji has asked, uh, so there are, there's a question from Tyaga Rajanji. There's a question from Garimaji. I will be sharing the enrollment link of the course, uh, which, uh, which has all the information. So let me do that now. Uh, this course begins from the 22nd of November. It will be conducted on every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, it is, uh, the course fee is 3,500 rupees. And as I said, we also offer scholarships and grants. All the course enrollment related information is on the link that we have shared. Subuji, there's a question by Garimaji. Would you like to take that, please? Sure. Uh, so absolutely, Garimaji. So uh, during the discussions, especially around the various rituals, the various aspects that we practice today, I think practice is going to be a major chunk of this course, right? I will be discussing many of these aspects as to what we practice today, uh, be it in terms of eclipses, not going out, not eating, 
taking uh, uh, doing certain uh, rituals during the time of the eclipse uh, all these aspects will definitely be discussed uh, during the course we'll be uh, from two aspects i'll be discussing that one is from what the various scriptures are speaking about because they do provide a certain rationale and a certain uh, way that these have to be conducted i'll be giving that perspective and second would be a more contemporary perspective of how we think that is actually relevant uh, in today's times we will i'll try to get in some perspectives of many modern scholars also who have tried to research on this and try to provide a linkage so wherever possible i'll try to get that through as well when we are discussing some of these uh, points any other question uh, from the attendees about the course so would you would you like to uh, mention uh, a little bit about the course objectives uh, you know that we have already posted on our uh, website but uh, you might want to maybe let me just uh... so there are three clear objectives that you have identified for the course would you like to talk about that yeah sure dimple ji i'll i'll uh, speak about uh, those course objectives uh, just give me a minute i have dm the link for your easy reference yeah yeah <laughs> i i did see that that it becomes easier so that i don't uh, uh, misguide people into something else which is already not there on the on the portal yeah. uh okay yeah yeah so I, as i uh, so the first objective that we have mentioned out there is about understanding the terms related to sanatana dharma this is what i spoke about the technical terms so we like for example we very commonly use the term dharma right lot a lot of times we use the term dharma we use the term of course vedas are used very very uh, commonly then we use terms like brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra the the four varnas we use the term grihastha we use the term kshetra or temples temples what is called in uh, in english or what we refer to as temples it is translated as kshetra alaya and many of these things so what does a temple mean what is the concept of a temple worships of a temple uh, we just spoke about grahana and all so these are all different terms so what does dharma mean what does what do vedas mean so this how do how does this, how do the scriptures define it because today what we know of many of these terms is somebody's uh, free thinking on that term uh, or their own interpretation of it but our scriptures have also given certain interpretation because as scriptures are defined those terms they have introduced those terms and they have defined those terms also so what i'll do is i'll be bringing forth in front of all of you to say that what is that definition or how are the scriptures really defining these terms which they have themselves introduced so that will be one thing that i'll uh, i'll be doing during this course the various constituents of sanatana dharma that's that's exactly what i also mentioned in my slides to say the various aspects of sanatana dharma what are what is the entire canvas or uh, if if i might say that right of sanatana dharma what all does it comprise of because it's such a huge expanse you could speak about vedas you could speak about the epics like ramayana mahabharata you could speak about the various puranas you could speak about bhagavad gita you could speak about vedanta you could speak about yoga you could speak about sankhya you could speak about the temples you could speak about certain rituals being followed in various temples you could speak about certain gods and deities you could you could speak about certain supernatural phenomena you could speak about your past birth and your future birth and the aspect of astrology and how these are all being defined you could speak about aspects of saying vedic mathematics and how is uh, you know various aspects of mathematics that was uh, formed in the earlier days so so many so many so many aspects that are there to this this term sanatana dharma what all comes under the umbrella of sanatana dharma so that is going to be the attempt uh, during this course and structure and relationship of these constituents right so it is not like a random set of things because today what we understand or many of us understand is a random set of things okay there is tantra somewhere there are tantric practices somewhere many of the times the moment you hear tantric practices you are always associating it with some kind of uh, harmful practices or using some black magic but is it really that 
Is Tantra really that? Was Tantra really developed as that? How did it change over a period of time? So that versus how does this relate with Vedas? How do the Vedas relate it with the temples? How are temples related with philosophy? How is philosophy of various aspects related with uh, various uh, Shastras? And how are these Shastras and Vedas related with God? Does it need, do the Vedas want all of us to accept, uh, be theists and accept a God or a deity? Or no? Can we also be atheists? While, while being under Sanatana Dharma, does Vedas speak about us being theists or atheists? So there's so many confusions and so many aspects. How do all this correlate? How do all these blocks come together? I think that is also something that we will attempt to do. That's where my point of structured approach came into the, uh, was presented to say that, how does each of this thing correlate with one another? And hence, you yourself can start thinking to say that how this could have evolved from one another. So I think this is pretty much the, these are pretty much the objectives that we had laid out uh, for the course. So Buji, there is a, a question by an anonymous attendee. So would you like to take that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So will this course cover the evolution of Sanatana Dharma over time? Definitely. That is going to be the primary focus because all these things itself are evolution and I think the constant thing that you'll be seeing through the course is how Sanatana Dharma evolved, right? So nothing has happened at one point of time and remained that for all, all time. That has never been the case. So how things have evolved, why things have evolved, that is also important for us to know. Why did something evolve? Why did something become from one thing to the another? What was the motivation or what was the motive of something becoming from one to the other? And how did things evolve? So what are things that are constant? What are things that are evolving? There are both these aspects, which is a very mystical, which is a very interesting aspect of Sanatana Dharma, that you have certain things that are constant and you have certain things that have been evolving. So what evolved, what remained constant and how do we really link this up together is definitely something that we will touch upon. Wow, this sounds really interesting. And I think oh, I will definitely be enrolling and not only enrolling, but joining the course uh, just for the benefit of the audience members. Uh, we have students from uh, across various countries and time zones enrolling in various courses that I mentioned earlier. So uh, even if you're not able to, you know, participate in real time due to time zone mismatch, you can always uh, attend asynchronously also through the recordings and uh, Subuji uh, can be reached through the discussion forum if you have any queries per se. So that is something that I wanted to talk about. Mm, anything else? Any other question from the audience members or? Or any other uh, insight that you would like to offer, Subuji? Uh, what is that one thing that to you know the audience members? Uh, okay, yes, we have a raising of hands by Shrikant Reddy ji. Shrikant Reddy ji, uh, I have. Yes. Yeah. You... Yes. yes. Thank you, ma'am. I I unfortunately could join now only, so I'm really anxious as to. What did I miss and uh, could, could I get a gist of, of what has been discussed on Sanatan Dharma? So Shrikant Redigi, uh, what you missed is that uh, this particular webinar has been organized uh, for uh, an orientation of the Indica course that begins from this 22nd of November. So there's a course that we are offering, uh, being uh, you know tutored by uh, our eminent faculty, Subhuji or Subramanyanji. And the intent was to create an interactive session wherein uh, the uh, prospective learners or curious onlookers could just have an idea about what is it that we would be offering in the 15 hours course that we have curated from the 22nd of November on every Tuesday from 7 to 8. And then, you know, they could make an informed choice. We also wanted to tell them something about Indica courses wherein we have been uh, curating and creating a lot of courses on the in the field of IKS. So that was the purpose of it. Uh, I will be sharing an enrollment link again so that you can take a look at the entire course on outline. And if you have a question, Srikanji, you could ask. Uh, any other question by anybody else? Yeah, uh, uh, for me, is it, it, it should my questions be about the course only or because I in, I just joined because I I thought some uh, brief about uh, uh, Sanatan Dharma. No problem, uh, Srikanji. Uh, you can ask your question. If we feel that this is the forum to answer, Shriya Subuji will do that. Otherwise, we might ask you to join us uh, in the course itself. Subuji, all yeah. yours. Srikanji, ask your question, please. Yeah. So, IKS and Sanatan Dharma, how, do, how are both of them placed? So, I understand IKS. When you say IKS, you're talking about uh, Indic knowledge systems. Yes, indigenous knowledge systems. Correct. Correct? 
Okay. Yes. Uh, so Srikant ji, let me put it this way. Okay. Uh, Sanatana Dharma is a much bigger expanse term. Okay. It is probably, that's why we have said, we have even named our courses Introduction to Sanatana Dharma. Right. There is some difference between when you say Indic knowledge systems and Sanatana Dharma because Indic knowledge systems could still be speaking about certain aspects of a structured uh, knowledge, codified knowledge in certain aspects. But many of the things could be not in a codified format. And many of the things we know are not in codified formats in our traditions, right? We do so many things in our uh, households. So the different ways in which we uh, uh, conduct many functions, conduct many pujas. And the only source of this is my grandmother told me this is how it should be done. Or my grandfather told me this is how it should be done. And if you ask them, how did they know? They say, my grandmother or my grandfather told me how this has to be done, right? So this is non-codified knowledge that is coming through generations. That is how we think. But many times you will find that these also have some kind of linkages. That is where we come to the evolution of Sanatana Dharma. So there will be some kind of linkages to something that is codified and something that has got developed over a period of time. So these aspects are something that we are going to be touching upon during this course of introduction to Sanatana Dharma. So there will be aspects of Indic knowledge systems, the various codified informations or codified forms. And there will be also discussions on how these have uh, permeated into some of the non-codified uh, forms and practices that we all follow or many of us follow in today's times also so that you are able to draw some kind of linkages you are able to think about it in a more comprehensive way rather than just as codified knowledge or documentation i hope that answers your question uh, shri kanji uh, yeah i in the sense that uh, that i got the gist of this program that mainly it is a kind of promotional uh, uh, oriented program that this webinar was supposed to be a pro promotional program. Yeah, okay, fine. So, uh, in a, in a, uh, uh, I mean, asking you about promoting yourself because, uh, in a sense, a suggestion that why are, are your books available on Kindle? I saw a lot of interesting book titles on your website. Are they available on Kindle as ebooks? Sorry, I didn't hear you very clearly, Srikanji. What was the question? Yeah, uh, it is regarding ebook availability on Amazon Kindle. Ah, okay. So are you a book, some of the titles that are there on your website, so are they available on Amazon Kindle? Oh. Srikanji, e uh, I have uh, typed in the chat box uh, an email ID on which you could further direct your queries, uh, adding to it uh, the presentations that uh, Subramanyam ji will be using throughout the course would be uploaded on the learning portal and any reading material that is referred to by uh, Subramanyam ji will also be uploaded onto the portal. If there is any text that uh, we expect or the faculty expects you to purchase, those details would also be shared with uh, them during the course. I hope most of your queries have been answered, Srikanji. Other uh, audience members, if they would like to ask or uh, type a question, please uh, feel free to do so. Any any question, any further query? So in case there are questions about either the course, the content of the course, about our faculty, or about the operations, logistics, enrollment, time, any other, most of the information is already available on the link that I have shared in the chat. However, our email ID is reachout at indica.courses. So you can always reach out to us with your queries. Uh, we would really urge you to go through this session once again. It is available on our Facebook page of Indica Courses so that, you know, you could go through it again. If you have any questions and queries, you can post it in the comments on our Facebook page. You can send your queries on reach out at indica.courses. Have a look at the course enrollment page, which has the outline that Subramanian Ji has talked about. And if you are interested in it, please enroll. Or if you feel that there are people who would benefit from it, uh, please recommend it to them. Uh, Janji, I will, I will send, uh, I will send this link again. One second. Uh, 
So the enrollment link has been sent again. Please have a look here. And uh, my colleague Koti Ji has also sent the live stream link. Uh, I will send that also in case. One second. Also, as I was saying, we offer grants and scholarships for which uh, you can either go through our website or send us an inquiry at reach out at in the uh, in the card of courses. Any, uh, we have more, many thanks. Okay. Yeah, Janji, you are our really cherished student. I mean, we really love the eagerness and enthusiasm with which you participate. So you are a highly valued learner to be very honest and super inspiring. Uh, Subuji, anything, anything before we kind of wrap up? Uh, nothing, Dimbalji. I'm just eagerly looking forward to the course and uh, taking and really interacting with uh, with the participants. I think uh, that's going to be the best way for me also to know what 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 uh, what more is left to be uh, you know explored. So I'm just waiting for that. So there is one hand raised by Tyagarajan ji. Let me just, uh, why am I not able to, huh, let me allow him to talk. Tyagarajan ji? Please feel free to speak. We have added you to the speaker panel. Or did you just press your hand inadvertently? Tyagarajan Shankaranji, are you there? I think. Are, you, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Please go ahead, sir. No, no. I have already registered myself. This is not the first time I'm listening to Mr. Uh, should I call him Subuji or should I call him Subramaniam? I already attended his course on Sankracharya. Yes. The one conclusion I had when you sent this notification a couple of weeks ago, he spoke about two and you said the fee was 7,000. I was wondering whether we should only register in pairs or I could do it singly. Today no, I sir, you can, no, no, sir. You can, you can uh, enroll <laughs> individually. I yeah, think they yeah. have yeah, they must no, have. No. Yeah. You know, last time that was a confusion I had. And then I'm glad that you sent this notification once again to give an idea of what we could expect. Well, I I knew it. I mean, I, I was expecting, I think I must have made a mistake or probably that confused me. I have already registered. I don't know whether you have seen this or not. I have already got myself registered. I was wondering why did you change it from Saturday to Tuesday? Is it because Saturday was found uh, not very easy for others to attend the course or uh, Tuesday you found was a better day? I very don't know. Very good wondering. question, Tyagarajan ji. Very good question. So what happens, ideally, we feel that a lot of people do enroll in their enthusiasm, but more often than not, we realize that the participation on Saturday courses is really not as good as compared to other days and okay. we want the idea like we are not just creating courses for enrollment we want people to get enriched attend participate in fact we keep mailing students if they haven't logged into the portal if they haven't accessed yeah. the course. so the idea is to ensure that we have maximum participation as subuji said that he wants it to be an interactive session number one number second i really want to thank you for this public endorsement of the brilliant course that has just been concluded by subuji on uh, introduction to Adi Shankara life and work. So yeah, that was a fabulous course. And in fact, uh, you know, the uh, participant feedback that we heard and plus we also keep checking from time to time, we decided that Subuji is the best person for this particular course and that's how we are. Thank you so very much, uh, Tyagra. No, I, I've, got, I've got one more question. Yes, please. I only, I only learned today that uh, Subuji is a musician himself <laughs> and learned from a very Madam Alamelu Mani and that was a great uh, information for me. We have been sending, exchanging mails or WhatsApp messages from Subuji. But anyway, that's the part. The question I want to ask you is, the Adi Sankarya lectures, do you have it in a printed format? You know, his lectures and the questions that were asked and the answers that were given. Do you have a sort of a booklet printed? You can always see, you can go there, have a look at it on your website or whatever. But having a booklet, printed booklet, it makes it easier for me to read it. So and good. looking at the telephone and then reading it, I find it very difficult. I, I mean, these days, well, I don't call myself an extra. 
<laughs> I am nearing 80 and I find it difficult to scroll through all those pages, etc. Can you give, give us a booklet, for instance? Well, number one, Tyagarajan ji, your enthusiasm outrivals even an 18 years old. So <laughs> it's just a number, number one. Number <laughs> two, I, do, I don't want to kind of spill the beans prematurely, but we have something in the offing in terms of, you know, when, when you said, Subhuji, would you like to like, maybe I'm monopolizing this stuff. Let me I'll ask you to enter also. So uh, in many, there have been uh, instances in Indica courses wherein sometimes we have coarsified the book so which is like somebody has published a book, a thesis, which we have published, and then we have made it into a course. And there are instances wherein the course material has been made into a book and published for learners like you. So I do not want to share things prematurely, but just an indication that perhaps we might have something in the offing. What says Subhuji? Do you want to say yes, at least? <laughs> yeah, even I don't want to say anything prematurely, Dimpraji, I agree with you. But oh, Tyagarajan, okay. I think your uh, the, the point is a very valid point, and this is something that uh, I have also been discussing with Dimple G and uh, and the Indic Academy, uh, you know, authority. So we will have something uh, soon. Yeah, uh, <laughs> soon. I put it in inverted commas. I want it to be sooner than later. <laughs> with your blessings, we hope it will happen. Thank you so much, Tyagarajan. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank uh, you very much, Madam Dimple, and. So uh, Janji had a question about the grants and scholarships. Janji, we are an inclusive organization. Every learner, be it in India or abroad, is the same for us. So the grant scholarships are available to everyone. We also have a festival of learning program wherein folks who have enrolled into three or more courses uh, are offered uh, free Indica courses too. So please do have a, a look at it from time to time from on our website. Or, or did it, no, there was no link for Subuji's uh, website, Janji. It was uh, uh, just the enrollment link. Uh, Vineet Ji says, does the course also give references? Uh, Subuji, would you like to answer that? Absolutely. I think Dimple Ji already mentioned it uh, earlier. So I'll just re-emphasize that point that uh, we will be giving uh, suggested readings and reference books because this is such a vast subject and so many people have written on it. Right. So uh, based on what best suits uh, the introductory course aspect, right, the beginner's course aspect, uh, we will definitely provide those suggested reading material for you. So the uh, basic, uh, the purpose with which this or the sentiment with which I'm um, new to course, uh, let's first talk about Anilji's I'm um, new to courses, but uh, in the past, raised my interest, any access to it? On, uh, Actually, Anilji, the Adi Shankara course uh, is over and therefore the enrollments are not being accepted. But what you can do is if you go to our website and express your interest in that course, whenever we offer it again, we will definitely get in touch with you. So you missed a good course, but uh, when we offer it again, you will definitely be uh, uh, you know, notified about it if you express your interest in the course. One thing that I wanted to say is that uh, uh, the energy with which we are curating this course is a to offer an initiation so that then you are inspired to pursue a study and pursue a path on your own so uh, we also have different courses so for example we've had a course on Adi Shankara that Subhuji uh, took uh, we've had a course on Ramana Maharshi uh, that was of an intermediate level we also have taken other courses on Sri Aurobindo. It's still going on. We have, uh, we are now looking at a course on Guru uh, Rabindranath Tagore, which is in the literary field. And also there are courses at various levels, but this Sanatan Dharma course is at a beginner's level to inspire, encourage you to explore more later on on your behalf also. And going forward, we might invite other faculty also to create an intermediate level course or maybe an expert level course. But this is a beginning for you to step into that journey. Uh, we have three questions. Uh, Thank you, Janji. Thank you so very much. It is so uh, enduring and heartening to see our learners so publicly acknowledge and uh, appreciate. So thank you so very much. I think we are at 651. Should we... Uh, uh, the course begins, uh, Vineetji, on the 22nd of November. So there is enough time. Uh, 
again for the benefit of the audience present now and for those who would watch it later this course by subuji on introduction to sanatan dharma begins from the 22nd of november uh, we will make sure that the link of enrollment is available on the facebook stream you can also check out this course on indica.courses website and uh, you can enroll and attend any other question i think we've done it so subuji any concluding words before we wrap up or are we like good i think we are really good and raring to go <laughs> yeah so i just want to thank you subuji for taking your time uh, for this particular webinar because this is essentially way of more meaning to the curious learners also and i thank all the audience members who took out time on a sunday evening for this uh, initiative thank you so very much for your positive endorsement also thank you for your curiosity keep blessing us so that we can progress ahead thank you subuji we'll see you in class namaste thank you koti ji thank you everybody